Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm back to do uh, my review of the first two episodes of Falcon the Winter Soldier. I didn't have time to do episode one. I decided just to push these all together, so uh, I will be doing weekly episodes. That's my Xbox. I am doing weekly reviews of these episodes. Um, just got mixed up with time. Also, these reviews are going to be spoilers, but these first two episodes, they don't really have that many big spoilers, so uh, if you do watch this and you haven't seen it, you're not missing out on too much, but I do suggest you go and watch these. In this series, the first thing I noticed, uh, especially in episode one, is the show is shot really well. It's shot way different than any other Marvel movie or show that we've had so far besides WandaVision. Marvel's definitely letting directors have their own vision now. I mean, they, they, they have, but I guess in the past, they just... I mean, if you showed me any movie besides, like, the Rooster Brothers movies, I could be like, this could have been directed by, you know, anybody. There's no specific director vision uh, when it comes to Marvel, but this one I can tell that they, they definitely have someone different doing this. Um, and I, and I, I like the way it's shot. It looks really good to me. I really like how Marvel's kind of stepped up their action. It's not just Kung Fu at this point. I mean, kind of is in Episode 2. But in Episode 1, Falcon's, like, flying through. He's doing, like, Falcon-specific abilities, which is what I want. Every Marvel movie, we have Captain America doing karate while Iron Man's shooting up stuff so I'm just I'm ready for new stuff and I definitely think the first episode delivered with that I really dug the, the opening action sequence of the first episode I like how Bucky has this this list of people that he's making amends with with all that's happening they they don't know that he's gone you know good and stuff he doesn't kill anymore and sometimes people just don't know like he has with the old with the old man you know, he killed this old man's son in a flashback which was really sick I love the Winter Soldier it was really nice seeing the Winter Soldier uh, in, in that flashback. I, I absolutely loved it. It's really interesting him seeing, trying to make amends with his old man, and his old man clearly misses his son. Like, he has, he has flashbacks, and he breaks down crying, and it's, it's really, it's really sad to watch. It's really, it's really heartbreaking. You know, you really feel for him. And you kind of feel for Bucky, too, because he was brainwashed, you know? He didn't mean to do any of those. Uh, he didn't mean to kill any of those people. That's another thing. I think the show showed PTSD pretty well. Also, I immediately knew Falcon's friend was gonna just push the plot forward or maybe die but he doesn't die he just pushes the plot forward uh i don't know if he'll have a bigger play in the future because i know i forget the character's name um but i know he has a future to be falcon in the comics he, he becomes falcon so maybe maybe in the next 10 years falcon pass that man on to him we're not sure yet but he um but i definitely thought he was just gonna die in the search to push the plot forward but no he's still alive so i definitely think they might be setting something up for his character i love the moment when the bank teller knew he was an Avenger because it's just I mean that's exactly how we would all react but also really explains how it works living in his Avenger because we really don't know like when you're an Avenger and you live there you think oh they probably get some sort of commission by Tony Stark but no they just they just stay there and they do superhero stuff and they don't get paid or anything and also there's no superheroes benefits apparently which really sucks for them too so it's, re it's really interesting to see we finally know how that area works for them and how how life happens when you're a superhero. Not much uh, to talk about in this episode, except just really good character building for Bucky and really good character work for Sam, I think. You know, Falcon's not a character that people are like, oh yeah, Falcon, you know, they really don't care. And I think the show's finally gonna give that to them. And Bucky, a lot of people care for him, but I think the show's gonna make them care a lot more for him, especially after him being the Winter Soldier. But also, one thing I forgot to talk about is Sam gives up the shield to honor Captain America's legacy, which I feel is a fine choice, you know, I, I feel like if I was in that situation, I might too. Namely, right after, you know, the government's gonna do, just bring out a new Captain America, and it is sucky because Captain America passed that on to Sam, you know, he thought Sam was worthy enough for the shield, and then it's passed on to John Walker, which I'm really excited to see, especially watching in episode two. Uh, so that's episode one. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10, because honestly, I was not excited for this show, because the trailers were pretty bad. I did not like the trailers, man. They did not get me hooked on this show. Oh, one thing to talk about before I had to go into episode two. Um, they say that Captain America is dead, and they also made a joke that he's on the moon. I don't think he's dead. I really don't think they're gonna, because they, we didn't see a funeral. I mean, we don't have to. I think they're just, it's just a rumor going on he's dead or he's on the moon. Honestly, if Captain America was on the moon, I wouldn't. I, I think that'd be a really fun idea. I think that's just a really fun 90s comic idea, and I, I, I wouldn't mind that too much. I'd honestly kind of like it. It's kind of a, it's a really fun idea, so I think they might be hinting at it, but I mean, I, I'm not putting all my chips in the table, especially because Mephisto is clearly behind all of this, as we all know. Here we are in episode two. Episode two starts off with John Walker in the locker room, and he's, you know, he's, he's practicing his lines. He's getting prepped up for, you know, putting on the Captain America suit, putting on this fake 
patriotism uh, performance, and I, I really like this scene. You know, it really shows his character. Also, I really like the motivation. I mean, you don't really understand all the motivations of John Walker. He was just passed on to this. He he definitely was trained really well. He definitely knows how to use the shield. Um, he's definitely not a super soldier, though. I like how he explains that. It's kind of like the first Avenger where Captain America's going about uh, promoting war and war propaganda. And in this one, this one is just, he's just... It's just a symbol of America, you know, he's signing autographs and he's signing action figures and stuff and he's really enjoying this fame and persona. And later in this episode he talks about how he just wants to do justice, he wants to be a good Captain America, he's not trying to dishonor Steve's legacies. I think meeting Bucky and Sam back up just to talk about how Bucky thinks it's wrong that Sam gave up the shield is a pretty good character motivation and a good idea. I, it felt pretty grounded, I was wondering how they were going to meet up and I think this one solidified that's a good reason why they should meet if he just came and showed up and he was like hey I think what you're doing is wrong so I I really enjoyed how they played that off and that's where I come to this I think the bickering between them two is not written the best and that was the thing that really turned me off in the trailers was watching you know the clips of them like bickering and stuff it's like really bad buddy cop movies and it's done way better than this show has. It is what it is. I just think the writing could be better, mainly the dialogue in between their bickering. And maybe the acting, I mean, they're great actors, don't get me wrong, but I think the acting could just be a little bit better between them two when it comes to bickering. That's my main complaint with this whole series so far, and we're only in episode two, so. I, I, I know it's gonna continue, especially watching some of the stuff in the trailers, but I mean, I do like their chemistry. I just think the dialogue could be written just a little bit better. That's the only thing that's really holding me back during this. Also, I didn't think we'd see them converge with USA, I'm gonna call him US Agent. I didn't think we were gonna see them converge with US Agent like this early in the series. Uh, but already episode two, they've converged a couple times. Actually a good reveal to see him come in at the action sequence on the semi. Cause I don't think in the trailers they ever showed any of that. So I was like, oh, finally a surprise. I was wanting to see him him and Battlestar come up and uh, they fight some of the more flag smashers, which I still don't know their motivation. I know they're trying to move vaccines and stuff, which is really interesting. US Agent and Battlestar are in this Jeep pull up beside them. US Agent and Battlestar team up with Falcon and Winter Soldier, then I th they're, they're talking about how it's a good idea and they can get stuff faster and done. Uh, and Falcon and Bucky are like, no, we can't do that because you guys have guidelines and we're free agents. We can do whatever the hell we want. So like, that's a really good interesting point because I never really understood like government's not limiting them so they can literally just do whatever they want whatever, whenever they want. And I really didn't think John Walker was, you know, an evil guy, you know, he's got his own motivation. He's talking about how in the GP just wants to be the best Captain America he can be, you know, he wants to honor that legacy. And then he was like, I think, he said the line like, I think I think we could be a good team with Cap uh, me and Captain America's sidekick. And like, that's where he's a dick. I feel like he didn't mean it on purpose, he's just a dick on accident. Honestly, Falcon and Winter Soldier, mainly Winter Soldier, are being kind of an asshole to them. Bucky and Sam are kind of being assholes to them where they're just trying to help. And I understand their point, but they're kind of in the wrong because Sam did give up the shield. John Walker was chosen by the government, so it kind of makes them come off like assholes and it kind of makes them unlikable. And you do see their point, but at the same time, it makes them assholes and it makes them unlikable. I just, I don't know how to feel. It's like, if John Walker was being more of an asshole, then it's like, oh yeah, then I can totally see it. But they were being dicks to him first. Part of me, even though I'm not, even though I love Captain America more than anything, part of me wanted to root for John Walker because he wasn't being an asshole at first to them. It was them being assholes to him first. Also, it was really interesting that there was a black super soldier back in the day and he tried to defeat uh, Bucky back in Korea, he's never talked about, and Sam makes a big deal about this. It goes to show that like a lot of stuff's covered, and I, I think the show's gonna talk a lot about race and stuff. Clearly in these first episodes they have, and I think he's doing it really well too. Sam makes a big deal how it's like, no one knows about this Black Super Soldier, what the hell is going on, why didn't you talk about it, Steve didn't even know, and Bucky was like, he's gone through too much, and Sam kind of is like, you're right, but he's like, I still feel like he should be known, but kind of shows that Bucky isn't racist, he was just like, he's been through too much. At, well, imagine a world when they found out there's a black super soldier, like, if, like especially back in the day. After Bucky gets arrested, that's when John Walker becomes an asshole to them. And he has every right to be. They were pretty rude to him. I'm also really excited to see how they're going to, you know, go against each other, especially if they're following the same case. Uh, it's going to be like a, you know, who gets to it first. So I'm really I'm kind of excited to see that. And lastly, I guess the re big reveal, which really wasn't a reveal in this episode, is that they would need to go talk to Zemo. And I kind of like the... The cliche, they play Mozart's Requiem to show that this 
this uh, this villain is super serious. It was kind of weird because it just played like a 30 second, you know, it played the end of Mozart's Requiem in this 30 second clip and it just like cut off. I was expecting, you know, for him to, for a little bit more. It, it just felt really awkward. It was like an awkward way to end the show, especially how they cut the music. So I think if they started the next episode with that, I feel like it would have been much better. They just ended, they say his name's Emo, cuts the black credits. I think it would have been better if they started this next episode with Lacrimosa. I think that would have been much better. It just felt really awkward and really like, it was just cut up a little weird to me. So that's it. So far I give this, I don't know what to give this series. A uh, good episode. If I'm rating each episode, I'm gonna give the first episode eight out of 10, uh, I would give this episode Maybe a 9 out of 10. Nah, I would give the first episode a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I give this episode at about an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it too, but I don't know. It just kind of made Bucky and Sam look like assholes to me. And I was like, I wish I do like, which I'm fine with, but just part of me just kind of didn't kind of want to root for John Walker a little bit. And I feel like a lot of people are going to see past that. So, anyway, I hope you guys really enjoy my review on these two episodes. I'm going to try and keep up weekly. If not, I'll just do three videos of two chunked episodes, but I'll try to keep up weekly. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.